G'day guys, welcome back to yet another trade period update and today I'm happy to announce that this particular trade update is brought to you by Filippo Loretti. Now I was lucky enough to pick up this very nice watch recently from the brand Filippo Loretti. I've been starting to get into watches more and more a little bit as I get older. Frankly I'm a little bit late on the bandwagon so I'm still kind of trying to find my taste with watches but it did really strike me that you get some really nice watches at a very reasonable price with these guys. They're Italian style watches and personal Personally, I've myself favored the Ascari Black Steel Link variety. I've had one watch previously and it really struck me how this particular watch is quite a bit nicer considering it was still at a very similar price point. I'm pretty excited to announce that through TrueFooty you can get 15% off Filippo Loretti watches if you use the code TrueFooty hashtag 15 at checkout. The added bonus is they offer free shipping on their products as well as a 10 year international warranty. So if you're keen to add to your watch collection or even start one, I recommend checking these guys out. So just repeating that, you can get 15% off their lovely watches if you simply head to their website and use the code TRUEFOOTY hashtag 15. Oh, what time is it? It's time for another trade update. All right, guys, let's get into it. This was a particularly boring day in terms of news uh, that came from the first day of week two of the AFL trade period. I feel like there's a little bit bubbling under the way at the surface. You feel like there's a bit of a calm before the storm, so to speak. We didn't really see many deals get done. I think, in fact, it was only the one with Lipinski finding his way to the Magpies, although we did, I would say, learn a fair bit from today's news. Now, first of all, I guess in the last 24 hours, there's been this sort of whirlwind of rumors about Chad Wingard potentially finding his way from Hawthorne to GWS as Hawthorne try this aggressive strategy of trying to offload their unwanted senior players for high draft picks. But just as quickly as that rumor was started, it was more or less shut down. I did sort of highlight in the last video that Wingard had come out on social media, posted that photo of Leonardo DiCaprio from Wolf of Wall Street suggesting he's not leaving. Well, he's doubled down on that and posted a second one today. So I think we can almost shut the door on Chad Wingard heading to the GWS Giants. Now, listening to Trade Radio, someone called in and did point out the fact that I think he did something similar in his final few weeks at Port Adelaide and then, of course, ended up leaving that club. But it's hard to imagine that Wingard is so steadfast in his desire to stay at the Hawks that he could have his mind changed in the next 48 hours. So I think we can assume Wingard's not going anywhere. And Wingard to the Giants would be a pretty shock move considering what happened in his draft year. I guess he was 18 at the time, but supposedly he told GWS that he was unwilling to go play in Sydney and wasn't wanting to be drafted by them so he famously slid to pick six and Port Adelaide took him so for him to now be accepting of a trade this late in his career to the Giants I, I would have been baffled to be honest but I've seen crazier things in footy Riley Beveridge had this to say on the matter. He says, I struggle to see a way the Chad Wingard deal happens purely because of how adamant he is that he's not leaving. Hawthorne are not the issue. They deal if they could. So that kind of reflects what we kind of already suspected. Wingard is so keen to stay at Hawthorne, but they are kind of looking left and right thinking, who wants this guy? Because we could cash in at the draft here. Uh, you know, and fair play, Wingard's well within his rights to do that. We can't criticize Collingwood for the way they dealt with Trelaw and then 12 months later say, hey, Wingard, why aren't you accepting a trade interstate? So fair play to him, but it is an interesting one to ponder because he's now playing for an employer that doesn't particularly want him on the list. I think he has two years left on his contract. And Matt Rendell also said that he has to know at the end of next year, he will not be at Hawthorne. So while I think that's not necessarily the case, if he's got two years left on his contract, it is a worthwhile thought that in 12 months time, Hawthorne may just be asking the question again, if they're embracing this rebuild, are they not going to just try and trade him again or try and talk him into it? It's an interesting one to consider. And to be honest, from Hawthorne's perspective, obviously the earlier they can trade him, the better because in 12 months time, he may not fetch a first round draft pick. So that is an interesting one to watch in terms of how Hawthorne deals with this over the next 12 to 24 months. But for now, I think we can assume Wingard's not going anywhere. On a similar theme, GWS have had another trade target sort of get closed down with Rory Lobb also being reported as no chance to head to the Giants. I think his manager came out and said that he'd emailed all parties involved and said that there was no way this Lobb deal was getting off the ground. There's been a bit of a mixed report on this. Originally, it was reported that he was willing to take the pay cut, but then someone else suggested that perhaps he's not as willing as what was once reported. I mean, it's hard to discuss this without talking specifics because if Rory Lobb is earning 700k a year at Fremantle. That's 1.4 over two years. If he gets offered 1.4 over four years to go to the Giants, that's almost like playing two years of football for free. So we are talking about a pretty significant pay cut. Regardless, I think we can assume Lobb was keen to get over there and was willing to cop some sort of pay cut. The interesting takeaway from this as well is that reportedly Fremantle were completely unwilling to subsidize that. So sometimes obviously when a player gets traded to a new club, if that team is happy to see that player go, often they will sweeten the deal by offering to pay a little bit of their salary still. And I presume Fremantle can because 
because their salary cap is probably fairly good at the moment. In this instance, they said, no, Lob's a contracted player to us. We'd rather keep him. And to be honest, that's more than fair. And from a GWS perspective, I suppose for a team that sees themselves in contention, not having his salary subsidized in any way would probably have been seen as a blow. It's a funny little deal, this one where he's a contracted player and it's almost as though Fremantle fans, in fact, I know Fremantle fans personally who are disappointed he's not going. There's been a bit of talk that GWS are only willing to offer a future second round pick, which you can kind of understand for a player, the Rory Lobb's kind of inconsistency, the top end talent and the performances that he can produce is really high. But obviously GWS were unwilling to move, say a future first or pick 13 this year, which you'd have to respect. I do suspect there will be a flow on effect here to the Bobby Hill deal, who's still seeking a trade to Essendon. I believe it's come out since my last video. Steven Silvani seems to suggest that there's a link between the Lobb deal and the Bobby Hill deal. Apparently they're the same management group and he doesn't doesn't reckon it's a coincidence that both of these players sort of were linked to trades at the same time. But even just looking past that, I think the fact that the Giants have missed out on potentially Wingard, we don't know how serious they were about that, but also Rory Lobb, for them to accept a trade for Bobby Hill who's contracted and they don't have to let him go, it's hard to see that happening now. In my opinion, if they don't get Lobb, which is still possible, I'm actually more willing to rule out Wingard than I am Rory Lobb. I still think there's a chance it gets done on deadline day. If they don't land either of those guys though, I think they'll be far less receptive to an offer for Bobby Hill. And let's face it, Essendon are notoriously stingy at the trade table with Adrian Dodoro there. I think I read somewhere that they're offering a third rounder, which is certainly not gonna get it done. I don't know if it was pick 51 in this year's draft or a future third rounder, but if that is true, then that's far under what you'd expect GWS would accept in a trade for him. Continuing on the theme of big headline trades that are now seemingly off, the J. Grow Mirror to Port Adelaide thing kind of died just as quickly as it started as well, with people suggesting that Port are far less interested than what was originally reported. And to be honest, this one makes sense to me, not from Port's perspective, I can see why they'd be interested, but Jager Ramirez seems to be well and truly entrenched in Melbourne, and I would have been shocked to see him leave Melbourne to head to Port Adelaide. But crazier things have happened, so I did believe it was a possibility. As I touched on, Lipinski officially moved clubs from the Western Bulldogs to Collingwood for pick 43 overall in this year's draft. I think it's good value for the Pies, is it the right age profile for a young and up-and-coming list, and the good thing about Lipinski compared to another draft pick is he's had a few years in the system, and he can contribute from day one. And from his perspective, he was not really cracking into that dog's midfield anytime soon, you'd have to imagine, so you can see why, despite the fact that he's considered fairly talented, the dogs won't miss him too much. So I'm not surprised this deal got done relatively cheaply. I'd made a video the other day about Adelaide's huge offer reportedly for Jason Horn Francis, or at least North Melbourne's pick one, then their ability subsequently then to draft Jason Horn Francis. Toomey's come out today and reported that Richmond were willing to offer pick 7, 15, and 26, plus Callum Coleman Jones, who wasn't traded at that point for pick one in this year's draft. For perspective, in total value given up there for a single player, it's not too far off what the Eagles got for Chris Judd. That truly is an incredible offer for a kid that hasn't even been drafted yet, and it just shows how much North Melbourne rate him, how much Adelaide rate him, but also Richmond rate him as well. It's an interesting one where North Melbourne are knocking back all these amazing offers for Horn Francis. For me, that suggests they really think this kid is the next Petrarca, the next Dusty Martin. And on top of, you know, the output they'll get on the field, there's a potential marketing benefit there as well for a team that obviously doesn't have the most members, but suddenly has a huge draw card to get fans into games to watch this kid play in the future. In other news, apparently Port Adelaide's Peter Laddams was seen training in Adelaide with some Adelaide-based Sydney Swans that imagine off the top of my head, you got Will Hayward, Dylan Stevens and Will Gould, who were originally from South Australia. He's then formally requested a trade to Sydney, and I think that suggests that there's a fair amount of confidence on behalf of Laddams that he's going to get there if he started training with some of those players. Personally, I think this deal will be wrapped up in the Dawson deal. I hope from Sydney's perspective that they have a net positive where they don't give up for Laddams what they end up getting for Dawson. I'm sure that's not the case, but regardless, I think this will be all wrapped up in that deal. There was another trade request with Max Lynch requesting a trade from Collingwood to Hawthorne. He's only played three games. Highly the biggest name as well, but it was one of the only things to happen today. So given the fact that he's only played three games, I think Hawthorne are probably going to give up maybe pick 65 or 81. It might end up being 65 if they feel they probably won't even use it. To be honest, I'm not really expecting a big day of, you know, announced deals tomorrow as well. I think it's going to be fairly quiet. The reason for that being is I think the AFL will want to sort of hide a lot of these trades until deadline day, make that a bit of a spectacle. And to be honest, that probably helps me too, because if you haven't seen it already, we will be live streaming the trade period deadline day, probably the last hour and a half to two hours of that. So keep an eye out for that on the channel as well. Bush and I will be going through all the deals as they happen. But that's why I think there's been some deals that have 
done in principle but won't be announced until deadline day as well so i'm hoping it's a juicy one it's always really good fun when there's an exciting trade deadline day last year's was pretty frenetic from memory as well i reckon we're undoubtedly going to see some pick swaps as well which i'm interested in and one that came to mind is i still think the bulldogs pick 23 and i think callum toomey said this as well is up for grabs the reason being is that they can still trade down that pick and get more points to match a bid for sam darcy and one of the candidates i think toomey nominated was geelong It'd be interesting to see if geelong are willing to trade picks 30 and 30 32 to upgrade to 23 that actually gives the dogs a fair few more points and it also gives the cats a look in the top 25 as well and they may achieve another one through the jordan clark deal as well which i'd imagine gets done tomorrow well when i say that it might get done tomorrow better be announced the following day but either way geelong still have a chance to get a reasonable presence in this year's draft but anyway guys thank you for watching this trade period update as uneventful as it was it's been really fun covering all of the trades with you as they happen may or may not get one or two more out before the end of the trade period we'll have to see how eventful for tomorrow is but either way you will see us live on the true footy youtube channel for the trade period deadline day hope you're enjoying the content guys subscribe if you haven't already i'd appreciate you liking the video if you did enjoy it and do go check out filippo loretti you won't be disappointed thanks guys and i'll see you in the next video cheers